In just two and a half minutes, the teaser trailer for the Joker sequel, Folie Adieu, packs in a lot of clues. It also leaves out a key element of the film, and it's no accident. It's become something of a trend for modern movie musicals to hide their musical nature in their marketing. If you read trade publications or study up elsewhere, you can get that info, but casual viewers can be caught off guard. So if you didn't know this already, allow us to break the news to you. Joker for Leah Du is reportedly a full-blown musical full of classic pop standards. We're telling you this, but the sequel's teaser doesn't, at least not directly. We use music to make us whole. This peculiar marketing strategy isn't new for Warner Brothers, which kept the fact that 2023's Wonka was a musical under wraps when promoting it. The studio also released a new adaptation of Alice Walker's The Color Purple that year. And while the trailer stated that it was based on the 1982 novel of the same name, it didn't mention that the film is actually a remake of the Broadway version only showing a short glimpse of someone singing. And this sneaky approach goes back even further. In 2007, the studio released a highly anticipated adaptation of the popular stage musical Sweeney Todd, the demon barber of Fleet Street. Yet, despite the fact that every theater kid had been humming along to the richly grotesque score of the Stephen Sondheim masterpiece for years at that point, Warner Brothers perplexingly tried to market the film as a straightforward thriller. One can't help but wonder why Warner Brothers keeps making musicals if it doesn't even have the confidence to market them as such. Though Arthur Fleck may be looking for a fresh start with his new mad love in Lady Gaga's Harley Quinn, Let's get out of here. it seems like the ghost from his past will be coming back to dance with him once more. At one point in the teaser trailer, Arthur and Harley are seen dancing on the set of a television show. As they groove to the music of a live band, large box lights and an applause sign hang above their heads. Based on the instantly recognizable orange, yellow, and turquoise color scheme of the curtains behind the pair, there's a strong possibility that this set was inspired by the set of the show hosted by Robert De Niro's Murray Franklin. Murray was a famous comedian and talk show host, as well as Arthur's personal nemesis after he mugged one of Arthur's jokes in front of his national television television audience. Well, no one's laughing now. <laughs> you can say that again, pal. He was ultimately killed by the newly christened Joker during an interview on his show. This new set could represent Joker taking ownership of a humiliating and potentially traumatizing chapter in his life to his relationship with Harley. Director Todd Phillips' original Joker had some of the most deliciously moody sets ever seen in a comic book adaptation. Folia Do appears to be upping the ante with elaborate, scenic design that melds the dark world of Arthur Fleck with the synthetic glamour of old Hollywood movie musicals. In some shots seen in the teaser trailer, Arthur and Harley literally appear to be on a stage with a flat, painted background. One set in particular, which appears to be the chapel where Arthur and Harley will presumably be wed, calls to mind the sort of set seen in the 1954 film White Christmas. The film features many jaw-dropping dance numbers, including one set to Irving Berlin's Mandy. The title character in the song is an independent young woman, who nevertheless is urged in the song to get married as soon as possible. This could be Phillips drawing a comparison between the outdated and gendered expectations of many older musicals and the plight Hardy finds herself in when she becomes the object of Arthur's obsessions. The teaser for Joker Foley Adu avoids clips of Gaga or Joaquin Phoenix actually singing, but there are plenty of musical references to get those in the know excited. Arguably, the clearest direct reference to another movie musical comes early in the trailer when it seemingly shows how Arthur will hallucinate through song and dance throughout the film. While walking with four guards, their dark-colored umbrellas suddenly turn technicolor. The aerial shot bears a strong resemblance to imagery from the 1952 classic, Singing in the Rain. This visual easter egg may be just that and nothing more. However, as it's an apparent nod to a film about the motion picture industry going through a tremendous, romantic, and yet often tumultuous transition, perhaps a parallel is meant to be drawn between that journey and the one Arthur is on the cusp of experiencing with Gaga's Harley. It's also likely no accident that Singing in the Rain is one of the most famous musicals ever, which makes its presence within the darkly comic world of the Joker all the more eerie. Don, the world is so full of a number of things. I'm sure we should all be as happy as. But are we? No. 
2019's Joker wasn't just an origin story for one of pop culture's greatest villains, it was also a depiction of one man's struggle with mental illness and a world that left him behind. Arthur Fleck often sees the world differently from how it really is, and Joker, Foley, Adu, takes that one step further. It's assumed that the psychiatric ward that Fleck is being held in is DC Comics' infamous Arkham Asylum, which was seen in the first movie as Arkham State Hospital. How does someone wind up in here? As Harley and Joker dance, there's an illuminated sign that reads Hotel Arkham, demonstrating that Fleck's perception of his surroundings is not the reality. The way he sees it, he and Harley are not patients in a hospital at all. Instead, they appear as performers in a theatrical musical. And the scene has all the trappings of a stage production. The rooftop, the sign, and even the city skyline behind them all appear to be part of a set, rather than a real-life location. But this is Arkham Asylum, or Arkham State Hospital, not a romantic hotel. There are several moments in the Joker Foley Adu teaser trailer that feel like callbacks to the previous film like the one where Lady Gaga's Harley Quinn puts on her makeup and pokes at her face as if examining who she really is or staring into a mirror. Another moment appears to be a dark reprise of another important scene from the first film, involving an entirely different character. In that first movie, Arthur Fleck interacts with a woman named Sophie, a single mother who lives in his apartment building. When they first meet, Sophie's kid is acting up. She makes a hand gesture mimicking a gun to her head, jokingly implying that she's fed up with her daughter's behavior. Arthur then repeats it. The two appear to grow close afterward, but the rug is pulled out from under the audience when it's revealed that his blossoming relationship with Sophie is entirely in Arthur's imagination. Your name's Arthur, right? You live down the hall? I really need you to leave. In the teaser for Foley Adu, Lady Gaga, before her full transformation into Harley Quinn, makes the same gesture. This is seemingly a nod to their relationship being partly a fantasy, as the musical scenes seem to imply. Though the Joker is usually known for his trademark purple suit, sometimes a clown prince of crime dons another color. In Frank Miller's classic comic series Batman The Dark Knight Returns, the Joker comes back after years of being in a catatonic state to battle Batman to the death. The now iconic moment in the 2019 film when Arthur Fleck is on live television with Murray Franklin is eerily reminiscent of the Joker's TV appearance in Miller's original comic book, right down to brutally killing his gracious host on camera. That's why I'm gonna kill everyone in this room. Okay. In the teaser trailer for Foley Adu, the Joker proudly sports a white suit that will no doubt remind fans of the one he wore in The Dark Knight Returns. Director Zack Snyder snuck plenty of nods to this story into Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice, and Snyder still hopes to one day adapt The Dark Knight Returns properly for the screen. Phillips also has clearly been influenced by Miller's acclaimed work. Comic book movies love to pay homage to classic imagery from the source material, and the first teaser for Joker Foley Adu does that more than once. As a rendition of the 1965 song What the World Needs Now Is Love swells, Joker and Harley Quinn dance on a rooftop. Their embrace harkens back to specific image comics fans know well. First used as a cover for the one-shot comic Batman Harley Quinn in 1999, the image of Harley dancing with the Joker became an iconic one. That original painting by Alex Ross, based on a reference photo of the artist himself, also shows Joker decked out in a black tuxedo and holding Harley in his arms. Though the specifics in the trailer are somewhat different, this image by Ross has become so well known that the scene feels like a tribute to the classic cover. For years, modern superhero films shied away from pulling directly from the spandex uniforms of many comic book heroes, trading them in for fashionable leather and other form-fitting material. You actually go outside in these things? What would you prefer? Yellow spandex? But in the explosive age of superhero films today, being ashamed of classic outfits is long gone. The Joker himself may have some pretty straightforward attire, but traditionally, Harley Quinn dresses a bit more like the Harlequins for which she's named. Lady Gaga's Harley Quinn is taking a more modern approach, but her wardrobe is still a clear callback to her original costume. First appearing in Batman the Animated Series, Harley Quinn wore an outfit more akin to a court jester than a supervillain. Yet, Harley made an immediate splash, and it wasn't long before she was welcomed into official DC canon. 
With a memorable red and black outfit paired with white makeup, Harley was always ready to play with her Mr. J whenever he broke out of Arkham. While Harley has moved away from her original masked outfit in recent years, even her current costumes often recall the original. Gaga's version also clearly pays tribute. In the first Joker film, Arthur Fleck incited what almost amounted to a revolution as the people of Gotham rose up against the wealthy elites. The Joker isn't exactly a role model. That clearly hasn't stopped other denizens of Gotham City from donning face paint and clown attire to prance about the city alongside their new idol. From what we see in the Foley Ado teaser, Arthur is followed around town by other Jokers. While this might not be a direct reference to any specific comic book, fans should note that in one DC comic story, there isn't just one Joker, there are three. In the series Batman Three Jokers, the Dark Knight discovers that three different individuals have been the Joker the entire time. Known as the Clown, the Criminal, and the Comedian, each of these Jokers represents a different era in comic book history, and each has his own unique tie to the caped crusader. Arthur Fleck most closely resembles a Comedian, but that doesn't mean the Clown and the Criminal couldn't show up at some point down the line. Of course, that's not the only way the idea of multiple Jokers could come into play. In the animated series Batman Beyond, a street gang inspired by Batman's arch-nemesis called the Jokers is often seen terrorizing Gotham. It shouldn't surprise audiences that the trailer for the next Joker movie ends with a smile. After Harley draws a smile on some glass using her red lipstick, Arthur positions himself so it looks like he's wearing the curved red liner's makeup. He then gives an eerie smile as the title pops in. While we don't know why Arthur is behind the glass or what this moment means for the character within the overall context of the film, we can deduce that it's a pivotal turning point for Phoenix's Joker as he continues to define himself as Gotham City's notorious clown prince of crime. As Heath Ledger's Joker once said, Let's put a smile on that face. While this closing shot may not be a reference to anything in particular, there are some clear parallels between this and the deleted scene from director Matt Reeves' The Batman. Robert Pattinson's Batman encounters Barry Keoghan's Joker at Arkham Asylum, where the villain sits behind reinforced glass. You can't make out much of Keoghan's Joker. He's purposefully blurred, with Reeves clearly intending to keep his version of the character a mystery. But there's an apparent smile-like scar that runs across his face, much like Ledger's version. This final moment from the Foley Ado teaser might be nothing more than a cool shot, but it could also be a small nod to the other on-screen Jokers.